This podcast and its content was created and recorded on Ghana land. We would like to acknowledge the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the land we reside on and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. <laughs> Welcome back to Here We Crow Season 3, 2024. Hello. We missed you. How's it going? Oh. No, we as in the, we miss the listeners. Yes. Welcome to episode O for opening round of yeah. Here We Crow. Uh, but it's better known as episode 80. Mm. Holy shit. I know. We're nearly at the uh, century. We'll get there this year. We will. Uh, welcome back for 2024, my co-host. I'm Lauren, by the way, and welcome to Sam. Hello, Lauren. Hello, Ben. Hi, Lauren. And hi, Dan. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Boys, all right. You boys, all right. Yeah, good. pretty. It's pretty hot up here, but I'm I'm keen to be back. Yeah, it's good. I haven't actually seen you since the last I know. episode. I know. I just we just discussed that before. <laughs> it's so weird. How many months? It's been a few few months, been and like uh, three months. Yeah. yeah, I've just missed everything that wow. uh, there's been as a joint. You're trying thing. to avoid Lauren. No. I would be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to find out if Ben has any stats for 80. I bet he does. Ben. Of course he does. Hit us with him. Yeah, I got me some stats. So, <laughs> as always, debut player number 80 was Chad Rintle. Oh, premiership player. He was, 97. Played with us for 97, 98, 23 games. Grand final in 97, emergency for 98. And then we've traded him to West Coast for pick... 80. 80. Yeah. <laughs> Full um, circle. Who we got? Brody Atkinson for oh, yeah. five games. Um, <laughs> but the, the pick number was more exciting. So yeah. uh, 80 wasn't a really fruitful stat um, number, but in 2022, our new headquarters were going to cost 80 million. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think they're <laughs> north the of 100 now. Of so, yeah. But, you know, once upon a time. Mm. Uh, a few player stats. Scott Thompson had... 80 contested marks, Vince kicked 80 goals, Greg Anderson had 80 tackles, and Michelini has already had 80 marks, the wow. same as Gallucci in his whole career. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Well done, Max. Oh, that, actually, I'm not finished either. So, um, <laughs> born in 80, not a very fruitful year in terms of born, but we got two, our midfield coach, Van Burlo, mm. and Michael Doughty, or Doughty. Oh, yeah? Doughty. Dogger. Mm. Player agent. Wow. Is that it? That's my stats. Is that um, underwhelming? Do you know? No, that was pretty good. I was impressed. You've gone into the birth years now. Yep. Is that a new thing? Uh, No, well, it's going to be because the numbers get higher. I'm going to find some pretty ordinary stats coming up. There's no, we don't win many games by plus 80. So, (laughs) no. Uh, There might be a lot of birth years coming through, a lot of random stats. But I think, I think you can, you know, spread your wings into just AFL generally. I think, Ben, I think that'd probably be okay. Oh, no, it's a cop out. (laughs) <laughs> I don't want you to share the magic, but I'm genuinely, I don't understand how you find these things. I don't know. Um, all I'll tell you is it's a fairly abbreviated process. <laughs> <laughs> AFL tables, control F. Well, you don't need to sell all, <laughs> most of my secrets, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is a portion of my research. Yes. Ben doesn't Beautiful. use key, he doesn't use keyboard shortcuts. Let's no, be real. no, he doesn't. No, he uses that gigantic <laughs> cursor. <laughs> I love um, keyboard shortcuts. Oh, you do? I even create little shortcuts in my yeah, in Word for when I type Maybe my we notes. need a Ben's Excel oh. segment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excel <laughs> keyboard shortcuts. What? Have you got a spreadsheet That'll for your backyard? <laughs> I don't have it. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> not, not, a, not presently. I have in the past had a spreadsheet <laughs> for... He's built his backyard on no, Sims. For, for it. <laughs> For a compost heap that I did build. Oh, yes, um, needed the percentages. No, the, the daily temperature, so I kept oh, a graph. Because right. you, oh you need it above. Kept a graph, not a spreadsheet. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, a yeah. spreadsheet going the into the graph. The data's yeah. made yeah. the spreadsheet you need the graph. The graph. <laughs> but you need it above, you know, 65, 70 degrees to kill off weed seeds and pathogens. And I was, yeah, okay, well, achieved. We're, we're not wow, at Ben's backyard yet. We, we, we we're, we're, what what are we in? Like two minutes in and he's bored everybody already. Might have to take that offline, Ben. I might outsource some of your Excel. Yeah. 
yeah, no. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. Uh, tonight we'll obviously be talking about the Crows preseason and the game against West Coast. A uh, bit of Crows goss. What's going on with the Crows during mm. the preseason? There's a bit happening. AFL goss. <laughs> it's all happening this week. How convenient. <laughs> uh, and we'll also give you our season predictions. Where will the Crows end up? How many wins are we going to get? Who's going to be the club champion? Etc. Etc. We're doing it all. We're doing it all. Here we go. Episode 80. Let's go. Are we playing this? We still playing pre-game warm-up? All right. Music. (laughs) Welcome to what is now known as the pre-game (laughs) pump-up. There was a reason why I questioned it. It wasn't me just being weird. (laughs) No. uh, Look, pre-game warm-up, polarising segment. Uh, We have taken your feedback and to be honest, I'm over it. I can't think of a song every week. I'm not like Dan. I'm not the jukebox of indie rock. Um, But we still want to pump people up. And unlike uh, this episode, which is only going to podcast form, we're going to be going to YouTube every week, so music gets very difficult. Yeah, so. That's right, yeah. Mm. We're switching it up a little bit. So basically, I just want to know, boys, what's got you pumped? I'll, can I, I'll start you off if you mm. want. <laughs> yeah, go. Uh, here's what's got me pumped this week. Oh, no. It's maths related, isn't it? No! Well, Lauren, <laughs> it's actually Lauren, wait, just to daddy put, related. Oh, no. <laughs> Lauren just leant back in her chair for this Yeah, one. she did. Oh. She's got the mic. Now, She's holding the mic. <laughs> Dan and Ben were here for this one. You weren't, Sam. But uh, over the weekend, uh, after the game, I uh, went down to the dugout where the Crows were. Um, obviously, the players were signing some footies and all that kind of thing. And who did I spy over the uh, dugout but uh, the bald man himself, Matthew Nix. And I just so happened to be wearing my daddy T-shirt. <laughs> and I thought... <laughs> I From the sh- merch Like, <laughs> maybe I... <laughs> Maybe I should show him the T-shirt. Mm. So, um, obviously, I uh, stalked him um, down past the uh, fence mm. and we got to a point there where um, I could see him fully and he could definitely fully see me if he was looking in my direction, which he absolutely was not. So, <laughs> I uh, yelled out his name and I showed him the shirt and he <laughs> laughed and then he sa- I said, do you want one? I'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> and he said... What does that say? <laughs> and so I yelled, says daddy. <laughs> daddy Nicks, that's you. And he laughed and went very red. Anyway, that's got me pumped up for the week for sure. But did he want one? I'm definitely sending we'll one. Get, I don't we'll know. Who, get him I one. don't care who's wearing it, but yeah. I'll send one to the club for yeah. sure. To, right. to be fair, I would not wear a Daddy Ben shirt. You wouldn't? I don't Speaking think so, of, no. I'll, I'll tell you. That is, no, wait, that You're is. You're not getting one, Ben. That's the difference. <laughs> that is a fantastic segue as, into as what's much pumping as I try. me up. <laughs> fantastic segue into what's pumping me up this week it is the competitive nature of one Ben of Ben's backyard and podcast fame. Have uh, not to be outdone by <laughs> Sam, <laughs> you know, in having a child and oh. taking a layoff from the season. Not only has um, Ben announced that he's also having a child. But uh, he, he's planned it outside of footy season to not um, <laughs> mess with the podcast time, <laughs> unlike Sam. Yeah, so well, we're, we're keeping that private, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're keeping it all private, but <laughs> surprise everyone. Congratulations, Sa- Sam ben, can that's e- great news. Sam can edit this out yeah. if you don't want it broadcast. No, well, all I'll say is there's no end to my pettiness. If Sam's going to get all this attention with a baby, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get in on that action. Yeah. It was more like you needed Sam's attention, wasn't it? You're like, I can't handle this. Yeah. We need to be... <laughs> But I am pumped up for Ben and family. I think it's very exciting. What's he talking about anyway? Isn't it due in August? Yeah, well. Yeah, finals run, baby. uh, Actually coming probably right at the heat of, you know, (laughs) (laughs) when things are at their worst. I was just adding a bit of mayo to the story. Ben, what's pumping you up this week? Well, what's pumping me up is I'm actually listening to something that came out this year. (laughs) I'm amazed. That was a statement. (laughs) <laughs> so, um, so it's. I mean, it's not a brand new sort of act, but it's the you might you know the smile. No. I do. I've yep. heard of them. Yep. So yep. they're uh, two parts of Radiohead. So Tom York and <laughs> John course. Greenwood. So yes. you know, is there a member of Daft Punk? <laughs> no, there's some <laughs> jazz drummer in there. So that probably takes you out, Dan. Yeah. Done. Um, but yes, and there is a topical song on that album. So the album is Wall of Eyes, but one of the songs is called Read the Room, and that's dedicated to Sam Pepper and Webster. 
Oh, and we'll the issue of concussion. Yes, so we'll, we'll hear that on the way out. So we'll, on we'll talk a bit more about that near the end. Yeah, it's outro. good. That's a good album. I've listened to it a few times. The Smile, yeah. Oh, yeah. I also, really like it. Have, have you listened to, to the first one as well? No, I don't think so. Oh, I probably have heard it, but I've mm. actually, yeah. I'm, actually I'm, quite, I yeah. This new one. I'd, because of this, I'd gone back to listen to the other one like both of them. So. Mm. Well, Ben, you got How me excited. That? I thought you were going to say something like outlandish and you've gone with Radiohead version two. Yeah. Well, it is the most, <laughs> I think of all their spin-offs, this is the most Radiohead-y sort mm. of spin-off. Okay, so is. you're basically just going Radiohead again. Well, it's all I can get. They don't <laughs> do any new albums. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sam, what's pumping you up this week? No, I no, I don't have anything. <laughs> nothing. Oh, well, um, since Sam has nothing, I'll also say harvest season. How about that? <laughs> 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 we got cucumbers, we got rock melons, we got watermelons, we got tomatoes, making lots of chutney, lots of pickles. All right, all right what's Con, this crap? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Couple uh, of days. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go to the fridge and I'll get some of this crap for you, Sam. All right, we can trial it live on the pod. <laughs> all right. Which, <laughs> Where, where are you going? <laughs> He's got to get some of his pickles. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just pumped about footy being back, to be honest. Yeah. I think. it's uh, It felt like felt real on the weekend, being mm. back. Um, the you actually properly... <laughs> no, I wasn't there, but... The pro- hey, hello to you, gentlemen. How are you today? <laughs> what can I do for you? Ben can't hey, would it. you like something special? i got something special for you. i got oh. some beautiful pumpkins. Beautiful. You roast him, make him into soup. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Just over yeah. here, i got... Hey, wait a minute. Who's been playing around here? Who's been putting plastic bouncy through the... <laughs> That's the matter. When I find the kid... Ben can't hear this. ...who will put this football kick team into my shop, I'm going to give him a good click on the ear. Uh, oh, my... Have you a footy? Oh, sorry. No, all right, well, that was it. That was the segment. <laughs> Sam was uh, mid-sentence. But oh, was he? No, 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 it's, that's fine. No, he's Are we he's still pumped. doing my segment or was that being cancelled? No, nah, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> After we talk about the game is when we're going to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Not about these delicious pickles. The, they are delicious. They're really good. Yeah, they are pretty good. I, I hope I'm taking one of these jars home. Yep. Um, I'm growing cucumbers. <laughs> don't you worry about that. <laughs> Talking about the AFL. <laughs> Crows goss. What's been going on this preseason? <laughs> All right. Well, obviously, we've had um, a terrible uh, update in terms of Riley Thilthorpe, who went down with a knee injury on Saturday afternoon. Uh, he's having surgery this week. Hopefully, mm. only a four week out, but could potentially be up to 10 weeks. Yeah. Which isn't great, especially after hearing what a fantastic preseason he's had from literally everyone at mm. the Crows camp. Yeah. Yeah, very frustrating. And for him to do it so late in a game that meant nothing, that we're winning by 10 goals, is so frustrating. I just don't understand why he was on the field. Like, he didn't need to be. I know hindsight's wonderful, but, like, why have your, you know, pivotal tall player on the ground on a goat track in preseason when we're up by 10 goals? It was pretty innocuous. He could have done that at training as well, though. Oh, 100% injury. he could have, but yeah. Oh, why do you have any of them out there? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not going to be sort of prone to knee injuries his whole career because he has had a few little knocks here and there that seem to have been a bit sort of innocuous but worrying mm. um, in previous seasons as well. It was a fairly uh, misdiagnosed injury as well. You had um, the commentators were convinced it was an ankle. Mm. Rankin came out saying it was a fat pad. Mm. Then we finally found out it was a meniscus. So. <laughs> Well, we could have asked Burjo on the way out of the game on Saturday. Yeah. Dan, we did walk past Burjo there. Dan said g'day. Um, Sloney, he's got another couple of weeks to go yet. But, jeez, you've you got to wonder why he'd want to play again. <laughs> you just don't want to lose your eye. Mm. Or you don't want to go blind, basically. Like, Yeah, tell me about it. There was no story, it was just that I'm clearly going blind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everyone in this room is except for me. Yeah. Uh, and Muzza, uh, now last time we spoke to Muzza, which was just before our last episode last year, he told us in person that he was coming back June 1st. But the update is he's looking at a May return. Mm. That is not very far away. No. That's like eight weeks. Yeah. That would be yeah, massive for us. It. 
Mm, yeah, that'll be. Um, <laughs> tell you about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit. I can tell oh, a you story. Got a bit on. Yeah, I've got a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a reason for the tell me about it, other than Dan. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we also have Harry Schomburg, um, who's also going to come back uh, and looking pretty good. Mm, is that just training. after August, and you can tell me about it. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the. I don't know the scheduling. Sorry, Ben. Uh, and obviously Mark Keane, um, who was concussed in the port game uh, by SPP, and you know we've dealt with that already, so we probably won't go into that too much. But what are you doing, mm. idiot? Yeah. Dog. Abs- actual sniper. I've never liked him. I, I no. don't trust him. No. Look you at his Instagram. Can't you can't like trust him. that guy. No, no, absolutely not. He'd be pretty happy with Webster now, though, wouldn't he? he his hit looks pretty yeah. um, gentle now. Mm. Mm. That's it. Well, we, we'll get into that a bit later. Uh, now, the leadership group. Mm. Oh, I know you've got a lot to say about this, Sam. <laughs> now, we've obviously named Dawson uh, captain and I think – who was named VC? It was like Ben Keyes and Rob? I don't Smith know. I didn't pay well. enough attention. Smith? I don't know. Was but we've got, eight, we've got eight in the leadership group and uh, some newbies. We've got Ben Keyes, we've got Mitch Hinge, we've got Rob, we've got Murphy, we've got Wayno. Darcy Fogarty. Big Fog. Mm. Look, it's a big leadership group, and I know uh, unnecessary. I know you you don't like it, but you know. I don't mind there being on. a couple of people floating around in the leadership group, but it's such a weird, large, and weird mix of players as well. Like they've obviously got their reasons that we are clearly not privy to. But why is Murphy there? <laughs> <laughs> because that's, he's come from the bottom. Is, now he's there. Is that's he, leadership, Lockie. Do you? Leaked, um, yeah, I don't know. It just it's weird obviously you know he's obviously always had that uh he's the you know the team man sort of aesthetic about him and i'm assuming that's why he's there but you know we don't know all, oh, all I'm, I'm just looking at it and i don't like, think he's an aesthetic i think he lives it sam he li- lives it oh yeah. sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you i was yeah. talking to dan about this on the weekend and i don't really see any negative in having as many leaders as we do because i feel like these days there's a lot of different personalities in a club and, you know, some people are going to be more comfortable seeking out a specific personality about a problem or something they want to talk about. But if they're all leaders, there's no leaders. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like half the It's team. only eight of them. That's not half. That's <laughs> like a well third. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like a lot. I just think it's, it's the number that annoys me more than the actual players themselves. Like they've obviously got their reasons that we don't know for, for selecting those those uh, people. Um. Well, I, I can tell you that I know that uh, they put themselves forward for the leadership group mm. and then the players voted on that. So yeah. they're obviously they're players that want to be leaders. I think yeah. that's the main thing as long as they want to do it. Um, and they obviously think they have a reason to do it. And mm. if, you know, if they're getting the accommodation from the rest of the playing group, then all oh, good to mm. me. Anyway, in your face. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it, it really matters. It's really for the players anyway. Yeah. So and Rob's handing out Peterson books to everybody. No, no. Well, maybe he is. He played really well on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Has every right to be confident. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of leaders, what I do like when you're at the game, uh, like High Sense Stadium, even though we were like burning to a crisp on the hill, uh, the mini hill, <laughs> um, is that you can hear like Jordan Dawson yelling at other players and... I heard him yell at Max Michelini. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was good. Uh, we also have some new life members. Matt Crouch, life member of the Crows. Phil Harper, head of women's football, also father of Eden from Maths. Oh, my God. I knew you were going to bring up Maths tonight. Sam basically, like, reeled me into that. He was fishing oh. for some Maths content. Is that this year? I watched yeah. the first week. Why? Oh, this looks a long story. Called having a wife. Mm, <laughs> no, nah, Lizzie's lost interest too. It's so bad. Yeah, well, we're not talking about the crows now. Um, <laughs> but uh, come on, uh, I didn't hear the Matt Crouch news. Why, how, do, how does he qualify? <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's played enough games. Is it? Yeah, like, do you only play like, is it, has he played 250 or something? Is that, is that a thing? I don't know. I'm <laughs> I don't know. Do your <laughs> research, Sam. Well, I didn't know he was in it. <laughs> If I knew he was in it, I probably would have looked up why. I say doing your research, do your research, knowing I haven't done my research. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we run a podcast. And there was a few, there was a few other names there. Uh, Wright and who else? <laughs> Dan, I'm looking at you because I haven't written them down. This is going well. <laughs> Just take this bit out. 
automatically eligible if you have rendered services for a period of not less than 10 years and played 100 games. Oh, oh so the qualification's really low. Okay. Interesting. Might as well make me. Oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Who couldn't play 10 years? No, no, no. Pros? I didn't mean that, but 100 games, like that's a lot lower than I would have thought. <laughs> but to be on a list for 10 years is mm. impressive. Yeah. Well, you'd hope you play more than 100 games in 10 years. If yeah, you're on so the it's list. more about the time, sir. So <laughs> yeah, the, uh, number of games. <laughs> well, okay, Lauren is anyway. sorry she brought this up. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, it is, um, well, I'm assuming you're going to be listening to this on Tuesday. So tonight is the uh, annual general meeting for the Crows members. I implore you to get along, especially if you're under the age of 50. It's a sea of grey hair. Because we need Actually, to... Actually, can we see it? Is it live on this? It's, it's tomorrow night. Oh, it's Will tomorrow you be there, Lauren? I uh, probably am not going to be able to make it because it's it's at six o'clock and I just don't have time to get ready and go out again after work at that time. But I will live stream it. You can live stream it. But Mm. I do – if you have time, if you work in the city and you're just going past Adelaide Oval and you're a cruise member, get in there. Tell them what you want. But none of us are going. (laughs) Well, they asked us why we didn't go and I said I've got a job. (laughs) (laughs) Ben, you're old enough to go. Did, did you say his name as well, Matthew Wright, life member? I said Wright, yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, we haven't moved on um, or uh, anything. I'm not, I'm not old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I said if you're under 50. Yeah, I've, I've got a young family. So <laughs> some might say a younger family than yours will be. Yeah, yeah true. Well, that you're old true. enough to answer the questions five minutes after we brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other goss? Yeah, just Theberton. Theberton's, oh. Theberton's happening. The plans are what out. A- Joke that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, We've only got though, one more hurdle. It. We've got one more hurdle. Oh my god! This is it. The last public consultation. It's going ahead. I'm we know so it's sick of all of that. Did you look happen. at the plans though? It looks really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've, yeah, I've seen this. Seen some of the like fly through things they've done. It yeah, does no, look good. You should go. Go download the documents. I okay. highly recommend. Some, he- some PDFs. Yeah. Some high quality I've got PDFs. Them. I've got them. <laughs> I mean, to be I've fair, them. <laughs> we have we have had to go over a lot of hurdles <laughs> to get this built. Tasmania went to an election for their stadium. Yeah. So, um, it could be worse. What a balls up that situation is. Oh, imagine it's if, shocking, uh, imagine isn't it? if the change of yeah. government happens and the stadium doesn't get built. Have they oh, started well, talking to Warner Brothers yet? <laughs> well, now I'm torn because the stadium sort of hinges on liberals getting in, mm. but they've also then shoehorned in a bit of iron. Let's just uh, rip down a few more old growth forests at the yeah. same time. That's going to be another one of our pledges. So. Mm. I'm probably more pro stadium than uh, old growth. So yeah, mm. it's uh, it's a wedge, tough one down there. Wedge issue. I love. Uh, there was someone. I should have put this in my bads. Actually, I think it was. I can't remember who it was now. Oh, it might have been. Uh, I can't remember. Someone on Five AA might have been Sam Tugwell talking about like Tassie team and just saying they've got two perfectly good stadiums down there. It's like. No, they don't. That Have you sounds ever like been there? someone who hasn't been to either yeah. of those <laughs> perfectly good stadiums. <laughs> to host the game every week. Those stadiums are shit. Oh, if we thought um, getting to Richmond over was a challenge. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bell yeah. Reeve is an absolute <laughs> dumpster Bell fire. Reeve is, yeah, no, that's that's not a place to have a large crowd. The only reason that survives is because North play there and they get about 5,000 mm. people there. And it still feels busy getting out. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Well, yeah. speaking of Richmond and Hyson Stadium, let's talk about the game against West Coast on the weekend. Uh, we won by 67 points. Mm. Not bad, but I actually thought we'd probably stomp them a little bit harder than we did, honestly. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, you guys talk. I, 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 I hardly else. watched yeah, it. Yeah, it was very, um like, cruise control type game. Um, we were sort of on – I was sort of trying to keep track. We were, like, on the pace to get sort of four goals – each quarter, um, we slipped slightly behind at half time. I think we we're on seven at half time, and then we went bang, kicked seven goals in the third quarter, and then we just put the cue in the rack for the last. So it was a bit sort of boring to watch, mm. but there were some definite highlights. Um, the return and and return to form of Sam Berry um, was really good to see. Huge. He, mm. I think, he got twenty odd disposals. He um, had a great goal where he bumped Tim Kelly off the ball while he had the possession of the ball. Nice to do a bump while you've got the ball instead of trying to bump someone off the ball. Mm. You know that kind of thing. Seven <laughs> tackles, yeah. uh, four clearances. Back to tackle Berry. 18 pressure acts. He's back, baby, so we won't be taking that Bez shirt down. So let's hope... <laughs> that limited um, edition <laughs> Bez shirt. <laughs> still that limited edition still shirt. For sale. Let's get, hope. get it while you can. Get let's, it while it's hot. <laughs> let's hope he adds that little bit of, um, you know, that little extra string to the bow that we need in our midfield. Um, obviously, we're, we've been looking for those extra players we can rotate through. 
Um, so he's definitely a candidate if he can hit that kind of form week in, week out. Lockie Shoal? Lockie Shoal. Yeah, he had, a, he had a decent game, I thought. Mm. 82.6% disposal efficiency, 23 disposals and a goal. Mm. I think he's like I think he's definitely shown this preseason that he is a great wingman, but he is probably going to suffer in the fact that they want Saligo rotating through there. So I think – I hope he – I hope he's just on interchange, you know, mm. for the season. Him and Sligo bounce between those two. I want Sligo in the middle too, though. So, I think the thing with Shoal is that he's he's shown some some really nice things in games where the pressure's off. Mm. I'm not saying he's necessarily soft or not as hard at it as some of the others, but I, yeah, no, it's he's easy. Not. It, <laughs> <laughs> he's not. It's easy. I think it's easy to sort of be on his side in a game like that on the weekend that it seemed very you know standoffish um, uh, when the, the heat comes on in round ten mm-hmm. when we're needing a win against I don't know I don't know who we're playing in round ten yeah. but yeah that's that's obviously where that pressure and that critique's going to come with Lockie Shaw and I reckon he'd have some pressure in terms of from below because I would, I'm slightly surprised we haven't got Nane Curvis in the team. And yeah, what's, what's happened with him? So And when in last week against Port, when he did come on, Nank looked pretty um, dynamic. So, yeah, I'm, I reckon he'd be pretty close to getting a spot. So, yeah, we do have a bit of pressure. Spots. I, I think I would like to think that um, Brodie Smith will be rested a little bit more this year and Nank might take on his role Mm. Um, as well as play a bit of wing as as well, but I guess yeah, that's that's all to be Wish found out thinking. later. <laughs> well, yeah, um, who knows? Another player worth looking out for was Jordan Butts. I thought he was reasonably good on the day mm-hmm. defending. Um, the whole defence, Borlase did some nice things as well. Um, Max obviously did Max things. He was quite good. I'm a bit worried about Mitch Hinge at the moment. The last couple of preseason games, his disposal has been. Absolutely terrible. Well, I've actually listed him as my smoky for club champ, so Ooh. you're wrong, Lauren. I reckon it's early, okay. <laughs> early, early season rustiness. No. I, reckon, I reckon he'll come okay. I, I really hope he does. He only yeah. had 18 disposals and that was at 66% efficiency. Yeah, it was his kicking that really Not, let him down. Yeah. Which he's shown glimpses of in, in yeah. like last year of some poor kicking. I hope you're right, Ben. I hope it's just get, you know. He's going for big, long, um, adventurous kicks as well and both grounds were fairly open to the elements. So mm. I reckon that probably didn't help. The player that concerned me on the day was Darcy Fogarty. I just... <laughs> Um, I, th- I hate to say it, but the jury's still out. Um, I, I think we say this every preseason. We though, do. We? He was really good at the end of our first podcast season to yeah. it, uh, when we had we made up the segment, and then he came good for like half the year at yeah. the end. Yep. And then last year, I don't think he really did anything to sort of progress from there. He was a, he was he was solid. He was right last I think he year. played a role. But yeah, yeah. But, I, I mean, think we're expecting him to be a superstar. And well, that, you expect him to probably yeah. dominate West Coast, and I think he struggled. Mm. Um, on the weekend, he yeah. Really oh, oh, he had a poor. He, there's no denying that he had a bit of a poor, lazy game on the weekend for yeah. sure. Yeah, he just couldn't get in it. He was getting beaten in defence. Yeah, uh, so, so that would be that would be the Eagles' strong suit, wouldn't it? Their defence, like if if they well, were they got Barras and McGovern. That's yeah, they kind of their fanciest players. Yeah, other than a couple of um, over the hill midfielders. Yeah. I think <laughs> they got like Tom Cole in the back as well. He's reasonable. And yeah. So, yeah. I thought we had a few interesting low time on ground players. So, obviously, Saligo coming back only played 48%. Smith only played 39% time on ground. Yeah. McHenry looked like he was being made ready for a sub role with 45 <laughs> or Hamill with 25. So, it seems like maybe out of those two as our subs. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good observation, Ben. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and we haven't even mentioned Isaac Rankin, who absolutely lit it up yes. ex- yeah. once again, four goals. I think, honestly, Isaac is the thing that's making me super excited about this season. Yeah, I, I, I agree. He was four goals. He was 109 fantasy points from 59% time on ground. <laughs> Did he make so his way into your fantasy team? He, he has now. <laughs> he, he is currently sitting there. I'm not saying he's permanently in there, but he is at the moment. What's I he took him out of mine last night. He's 620 Ooh. or so. Or, awkward, or you could say, Ben. It, it is an awkward <laughs> price, but I think there is room for growth, Sam. <laughs> He's good bit for of, a cheapie. Bit of, uh, disgusting good for a mid range. There. <laughs> there is some upside. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, speaking of Ned before, yep. oh man, every time I swear he does it to annoy me. Yeah, kicks inside fifty. Really worrying from him and Peddler on the weekend. Some absolute shockers going inside. When when our classy players don't have that kick inside fifty, we look terrible. 
the ball just, just bobbles its way to the boundary line off their foot so mm. often. It's so frustrating. Yeah. I know you love Pedler. I do. Yeah. Uh, we know. <laughs> we all know this. He doesn't. I yet, want him to be good. Um, I, 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 I genuinely I genuinely <laughs> like Pedler, but I like you've got to be better than that. He's it's so consistently he did, poor. I think I think you're right. Like I'm I'm not I don't want to disagree with you because I think you have a point, especially on the weekend. Mm. Um, but I do think he also – he does show flashes of brilliance. Oh, yeah. And there's still time for that to come on mm. more often. Yeah, for sure. So, um, again, not clocking out on him just Oh, yet. no, no. And, 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 and I'm not clocking out on him either. I just don't – I just prefer it wasn't McHenry and him getting the ball about 70 out. Well, this mm. is it. This is the thing. And, you know, this is why I, I want a player like Sholly in the team who has mm. an absolutely elite kick inside 50. Yep. Like his inside 50 entries are brilliant. Like mm-hmm. he's all seems to always be on target. Yep. Um, you know, that's kind of what makes me want him in the side. Mm. And yep. uh, Matt Crouch also played really well too. Yeah, I thought. Matt Crouch. Um, he's mm. had a big comeback. Can we talk about the big man, Big Birda? Big Birda. Big Birda. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> He's the big <laughs> boss bird to you now that he's uh, in the leadership I group again. I saw what Jetty wrote on Twitter today as well. So thanks oh for that, yeah. Jetty. We'll get into that a bit later, <laughs> the social media uh, thing. No, look. Uh, he's he, had a, he had a huge game. He was good. And he and my, my defence to that would be you know, defending of my position on, <laughs> on Rob, of course. Are you, do you want to renew your position at any point? Or? Oh, oh, it's, I, not, I, it's not intractable, Sam. I'm you well and truly on record. On. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, he played good games last year too, so it's not like it's he never plays good games. It's just they're not I, frequent enough. However, I'd say he did the things that you were complaining about last year. He was yeah. getting around the ground. He was taking marks. He was a game high, in eight clearances. Who was yeah. the uh, twenty-two disposals at a hinge-like sixty-three percent disposal efficiency? And who was the uh, big name Ruckman? He was a. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. curious. Yeah, no, it's fair to say that West Coast. Uh, ruck division is not the strongest in the league. Mm, yeah. But I, I'd, I'd say that's fair enough for hit outs, but the stuff around the ground, like they can still run around. It was reasonably warm and, like, and no one's ever denied that he's fit. Yeah, so, so yeah. I'm not saying this is uh, guaranteed um, he's going to be a superstar, but I think he's going to be good enough um, for the purposes of what we need to do as a team. Like with every bit of criticism I give, I always want them to be good. Yeah. It's just... Mm. It's just yeah. a bit too harsh and cutting. Of course, <laughs> of course you, we all want them to be good. Well, you know, uh, I think um, it was a good taster of what is potentially to come, but I'm not convinced that that's all we've got just yet. No, no. Well, that was that was just literally no. that was there was not much to that. Like that that last quarter that I actually got to properly sit down and watch was very like Dan, I think Dan used the word boring. That was just training drill shit, really. In that last quarter. Yeah, mm. well, if you'd like some boring stats on this boring game, <laughs> yeah. um, please, please hit us up. <laughs> it, while, while we won by 67, didn't feel like heaps, we, the stats sort of showed that we did dominate significantly. So 409 disposals to 297. Um, our efficiency inside 50 was 69%. Theirs was 25%. Oh. So our defence stood up really well. Uh, we won clearances, pretty much doubled at 49 to 26 Um and yeah, contested possession. We smashed them one forty four to one oh nine, and uncontested two sixty to one seventy eight. So, all in all, I think the one thing they beat us on was tackles, but we had the ball; they didn't. So, mm. um, yeah, so very solid in that regard. It was. No, I think we're going to come across better teams, but it's still good that we were able to comfortably play a good game against a, a lower grade team. Absolutely. Mm. Bring on a fortnight's time. Yep. Against Gold Coast. And Dimmer. Dimmer's Gold Coast. Dimmer's shit Gold Coast. Oh, no, they're terrible. <laughs> I can't. Oh, we'll I'm talk s- more about that in oh. AFL Goss. <laughs> now, Lauren, we were lucky enough to um, have a bit of a connection with the media team who set us up an interview after the game, weren't we? That's true. We chatted to uh, number one heartthrob himself, Luke Pedler. <laughs> and I was lucky enough to have a child keeping me away from getting to that interview. <laughs> yeah, look, and at you, least you got to meet Rory Laird, we Ben. Did, he did get a nice photo with Rory Laird. Did you ask Rory Laird to come on the podcast? It was a very quick interaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell him tell him the your old man story. Go on, text Bert. No, no, this is... <laughs> 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 Same as my, um, my stats issues. I don't, <laughs> we don't need to put away and like, give up all my secrets. <laughs> no, it was... 
Pre, the last time I used my camera was in the dark and I needed to get a photo of to get a light globe. What were you doing? So I had flash on and I hadn't turned off flash. So I was taking flash photography in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and it took quite a while to process. So, oh, I thought yeah. had, had, that had something to do with Tex Walker, the way oh, you said no, no, Tex no. Bird. Tex Bird. No. <laughs> I was like, Sorry. was he there? No. Okay. So, <laughs> just really quickly before we play the interview, Lauren and I were standing there waiting for a minute. Uh, our friends from The Project sort of got uh, the interview with Ned McHenry. We're like, oh, we'll wait and see who they get for us. And uh, then we see Luke Peddler walking over towards the boundary. You should have seen Lauren just light up and sprint <laughs> over to the boundary. I didn't sprint. I was walking fast. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to lose him. Yeah, yeah, you certainly <laughs> lost me. I had no chance getting in yeah, there. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you know, we had things to do. Ben. I couldn't anyway, keep up with you, Lauren. <laughs> appreciate, uh, appreciate the crews giving us time with Luke. Um, it was a nice little chat. Here we go. Cue my really bad quality audio of that... And we have Luke Pedler from the Adelaide Crows. For Hibby Crow, how you doing, Malik? I'm going well, thank you. Met a bad hit out there. How are you feeling after that one? Yeah, no, it was good. It was quite hot early, but um, obviously pulled off with a bit of cloud cover. And yeah. It's good to keep West Coast under 65 points. That was sort of our target going into the game. And, yeah, it's still a little few things that our guys will fix up. But, yeah, it was a good start and good lead into our season. Yeah, and you got a bit of a run in the midfield there, I think. Uh, yeah. How are you going in there? Yeah, no, it's just... Me, Rush and Rain's get a bit of a taste of it when we can and in a bit of a rotation at the moment to get some uh, centre bouts and play a little bit around the ground. So, yeah, just building our craft and learning how to play that role as well. Yeah, and can you tell me, like, I mean, there's a pre-season game. How much uh, of your energy are you actually putting into this kind of thing? Is it like, more like 90 to 95 or...? Oh, I think it's obviously we train and try to play at a high standard, so there's no real difference in that and the intensity, but... Yeah, it's never nice getting injured in a trial match, but yeah, you want to get through and make sure you're fit and get as much out of this game as you can to put you in the best position to come out round one and play some good footy. Yeah, that's it, mate. Question? Dude, you're an absolutely uh, favourite of our podcast, no secrets. We don't say that to every player, so it's really nice to, yes, to get to two and talk to you today. <laughs> but uh, just a bit of an off-topic question, but what, what did you get up to in the downtime and the off-season to get away? Uh, yeah, not not too much this year. Last year I went to Europe, so I just thought I might be a bit more quiet this year. And a few of us boys from the club went to Bali and, um, yeah, had a good time there. So for 10 days, I reckon we were there. And then just, yeah, got home and hung out with friends and family and, yeah, pretty casual. Speaking of Europe, um, I think uh, you popped up on Hauser Schonberg's uh, Instagram quite a bit last trip and, yeah, you got a bit of flack about your fashion, including yeah. some of the pants. Yeah, well, he's gotten under my fashion now, yeah, so <laughs> saying something. <laughs> uh, oh, what have I got? What else have I got? We were really underprepared because we didn't know who we were going to interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know either. I didn't know this was happening. Uh, tell us uh, your personal goals for 2024, Luke. My personal goals? Um, obviously, I'd like to play finals footy. That's a team goal, but... Um, yeah, so maybe my spot and just play some more consistent footy and start to get the ball a little bit more and impact on the scoreboard. Yeah. And then, yeah, keep building my game to obviously one day play a bit more midfield, I've thought. Excellent. And now uh, the other question I've got is your nickname. Now, we're rolling with Peds at the moment. Some people are calling you Pedo, which I think is a bit... Uh, yeah. Maybe you've got to steer away from that. Do you have any other nicknames around the club that maybe we can take on board or...? Well, probably not, to be honest. Oh. I just sort of just get Peds and... Peddler, that's about it, so... Peddler yeah, to, to the metal? Yeah, yeah. nah, none of that. Same as our t-shirt idea. Yeah, 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 probably not. <laughs> it's all right, it might spread, but yeah, pretty pretty standard. That's, that's for me. So what about, what about, like, uh, in the States, they have, uh, the give, you know, when you walk across the road, they have give way to peds as the sign. We <laughs> can take off that. It's right, Look, I'm, it's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm clearly here for the band some more. No, no. But I uh, know, obviously, um, cementing your spot's a big one. I think you went a long way to doing that last year, barring a bit of uh, the fitness sort of yeah. side of things. Um, yeah, so who's, who's your big contender for the spot, do you reckon? Who's, who's, who are you training with that sort of, you know, um, the next in line? There's no real sort of people keeping each other out. It's more we just want to get more of a mix through the midfield and have six or seven guys that can rotate through there and we become more dangerous in our forward half and in the midfield. So that's sort of where we're at at the moment. And, yeah, me, Ranks and Rush are a bit newer to it. But, yeah, we're still learning and hopefully we get to a stage where we all just sort of rotate through there. Probably on a similar line of questioning, but who do you see having a breakout year this year? It probably is a bit on the fringes last year. Uh, I think Phil Thorpe's had a great pro season and 
it's pretty come up against a couple of good defenders today and yeah he'll come back strong and you have a great season you're right awesome i definitely look forward to that and yourself as well so nice. well, one more. we'll wrap it up here but um i'm not sure if you're aware but uh and then a paper i uh, think you're all one of the heart frauds of the crews uh now and uh i mean it's been slightly up since shane mccartum left but uh you're kind of like getting some comparisons to tony modra that's happening over there what do you what do you have, have anything to say about that yeah, I don't have too much to say on that. It's a pretty good comparison, not going to lie, but... Uh, might be the blue eyes, might yeah, be the, the leg on it. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, thank you, Tom. Thank you, sure. no worries. Cheers, Mark. Thanks, bro. Footwear sacrificed at half price and equipment slashed to half price. Rowan Jarman's huge half price sale. Don't miss it. I'm only doing bads. I'm going to do some goods. <laughs> I'm going to do my goods in the pump up at the start. Okay. So, yeah. Well, but you didn't. Unless I've got, unless bin? I've got like some really specific goods that I need to throw in this segment, sure. and then I might do them. What's in the one was bin one bin? good thing I did really enjoy watching the West Indies win in Australia in that the Test nice. match. Did you see that? Yeah. Did you actually watch some cricket? No, I just saw the update. Okay, <laughs> that was quite a while ago. So it was, yeah, yeah. but I put it in my because mm. I do I do some prep, so I had some quite a here. while ago. Yeah. Prep from what? Two months ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, but bad things. Uh, one thing I wrote down, this was a little while ago too. Now, Wait, and he's, uh, what? You have another stinger for that bit? Oh, that was the bads. Oh, okay. That was the bads one. <laughs> Let the producer produce Come on, Dan. I know what I'm doing, Dan. So, is the bad thing we uh, beat up on a, another small country in New Zealand and won that test match? Oh, well, yeah. It feels a bit weird. Yeah. I don't know. We only won that because of that last week at stand anyway, really, didn't we? Or that was the reason we won so easily. Maybe. Anyway. Yeah. Not, not, not a cricket not a podcast. podcast. No, Sorry, not. move on. <laughs> uh, he's already been. He's already retired now, or he's he's quit Woolies anyway. But I had to, I wrote in here about the the CEO wearing the shelf stacker uniform. And yeah, his, what and a dipshit! What that was like the worst thing I've seen. Trying to like be a man of the people in his you know what was he made like ten the million PR a year? team for that. I know, hundred percent. That is that is such a mistake. And uh, the best thing PR was team. when he tried to get them to delete that part of the interview. Oh, no. like, nah. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Everyone is going on about how terrible he was, and I agree he was terrible. What a, what about the Cole CEO? Yeah. He yeah. was like a robot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Like, Who Col- are these people? Colesworth, never heard of it. Mm. No, I've never heard that. Term. Yeah, you've never heard Colesworth, <laughs> never. <laughs> okay, okay, Rob, robot lady, go yeah. back to your planet now. But yeah, it's so yeah. Anyway, uh, the hot weather can get in the bin too. I'm sick of it now. <laughs> I know we've probably got another like at least a couple of weeks of it. But For late summer. Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah, oh, like March is always hot, so it's no surprise. But um, Look, I, I just a, as a person cool who down. doesn't really wear shorts, fuck. Yeah, awful. I know. Same. I had that wedding on Friday, mm. and it was in Renmark, and it was only it was like thirty four, but uh it was so it felt so hot there. It was just no wind. It was just beaming sun all day. Uh, I reckon I drank about six seven liters of water and didn't go to the toilet once. It yeah, was just wow. gross. I yeah. sweated so much. I had a wedding the week before, and it was basically the same thing. It wasn't yeah. even that hot. It was like twenty seven or something, but yeah. it was like boiling in the sun. Yeah, it's just like just terrific. yeah, just shit. Winges. Proper oh. cooking at the yeah. footy on Saturday too. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. But the worst thing is... Yeah, I'm the old man talking about the weather over there. You yeah. Guys. yeah. <laughs> says, says the, the man who wears shorts Wait, all you year might, round. You might need this from Keith Martin over there for, <laughs> for all the gardening. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Warm weather does ripen tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the the worst thing was the Gronks that stole my wallet and used it at the highway oh, a couple of weeks ago. So it's the I'd, first I'm yeah, hearing did you get any this. CCTV oh. footage? Or? Yeah. So the cops actually rang me today and um, told me that they uh, have found the CCT CCTV footage from the highway uh, from the transaction they put through sixty seven dollars. I can only imagine it was maybe four Freddie Lexias <laughs> cartons. <I'm laughs> Hard solo carton. <laughs> I yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so anyway, um, they're not. I told them. Look, I actually, do you know what? In the, in their defence of of banks here. Commonwealth Bank gave me all my money back, no questions asked. Yeah, yeah they're insured for that stuff. Yeah, it was great. Even like all the weird transactions, they put through some shit like online as well, a bit of afterpay uh, after before pay. I realised. Yeah, how yeah. do they get the afterpay? Oh, I guess they got... They just use the card. On. You've got an afterpay card? No, no, no. They just use the my credit card on their afterpay account. Mm. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah they yeah, just yeah. paid it off using that. Well, that's so. pretty dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they, they, yeah. So anyway, uh, obviously nothing's going to happen to that. But I'm going, I'm going walletless now. I'm not even going to have a wallet. Yeah, no. I don't really take mine out anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. I think quite like it. I got all my cards replaced, and now don't even want them. Yeah, yeah. don't need them. Keep up with me, Sam. I haven't carried a wallet for ages. Oh, 
Where are we? I find that hard to believe, actually. Yeah. Well, check my pockets if you want. To. <laughs> 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 what do you carry instead? My phone. Yeah. Even he's, got my, see, dri- my driver's my driver's license is on there. Medicare card. Yeah, Don't ben, you worry. Ben is a man of the twenty. First century, twenty first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? with the ticky tockers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, just making ourselves look even older. <laughs> Good lord. Are we doing predictions now? No, we're talking AFL goss. AFL goss. And we'll go into predictions. All right, we talking about Clarko? Yeah. Oh <laughs> this was new news to me when I got here tonight. I hadn't heard what he called the players. So obvi- obviously, um, two pretty big concussions in the last couple of weeks during preseason. The first one was on Mark Keane. SPP, uh, four matches he's been he's out for. He didn't get to play the last preseason game either, so technically it's five. But whatever, he probably deserved it. He want, they, Port wanted three, AFL wanted four. Look, I, I don't want to go on too much about it because it's over, but what were the arguments that Port were putting across there in that hearing? Because they uh, were lunacy, honestly. They mm. were basically just contradicting themselves through the whole thing. Well, yeah. their PR was contrition, but their arguments were he went to tackle. Mm. So that's not a lot of contrition. No. And i got to say, Graham Corns, you flog. <laughs> uh, I read an article today that you think that he, he obviously wasn't going for a bump. Which part of the footage were you watching? Because <laughs> I've watched it in real time. I've watched it in slow-mo. I've watched it in slow, 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 slow mode. And at no point was he not ever bumping. Mm, yeah. When you're running to the contest, he doesn't have any arms out. He's bumping. And he's a grub anyway, so. Well, even Ro said we're turning into soccer because of that decision. It's like, well, it did look like he turned on, turned side on. And why? Like, why did he do that? Yeah. I, I don't buy the, for this one, I don't buy the split second decision. I mean, obviously it is a split second decision, but why is that your decision? And also, I don't know, mm. he was like three feet away when he like turned to brace for the bump. Mm. So I don't understand how he could be tackling. Anyway, that's over. And now we're back again with the Webster bump, which is even worse. <laughs> yeah, the what Webster bump, like you, you see lots of bumps and you could you could argue a lot of them are just clumsy or dumb or whatever at the moment. But this was like old school, like Byron Pickett stuff. You know, mm. Just like ironed him out. Yeah. There's no other intent. Like, how stupid do you have to be? Like, you, you just don't do that in the game now. Yeah. I mean, we were in the exact same position in round one of last year with Shane McAdam, where mm. he did that big bump, got suspended for three games. And if he had done that this year, he probably would have got four games. Mm. And, you know, I didn't look at that bump as that bad at the time. But now in hindsight... Because he only got two. Yeah. Mm. But see, so in hindsight, we're trying to stamp that... Out of the game. But, yeah. like, the argument there, Shane was actually bending down to grab the ball when he hit, like, hit him as well. Well, I mean, his bump was aggressive, but he mm. did actually stay low and did actually not hit him in the head yeah. as opposed to the last and, two. And despite all this, the bump still isn't illegal, is it? You're allowed to bump. Yeah. You're just not allowed to hurt them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We're well, making, so making it hard for ourselves, aren't we? leap off the ground is yeah. the, the main rule, I think. Right, right. Okay. So if Sam Berry um, bumped it with the ball in his hand, bumped Tim Kelly and actually injured him, would he be in trouble? Well, yeah. No, it wasn't really a bump. It was more like a... Bend off. Bump oh, Webster. off, yeah. yeah Webster, Fend off, like, bump off. The Webster one is clear cut, really, isn't it? He tried to lay him out. Like, it was a line-up. And, yeah, that's and in I mean. a week after it all the Pal Pepper stuff, it was just so dumb. They're going to make an example out of him. I feel a bit sorry for him because he's not... It's not like he's, you know, got a history of being a, this sort type of person, but he's 100% going to be made an example you of. You can so. only imagine that he felt that his spot in the side was a little bit tenuous and he wanted to show that he's, you know, really putting in. And yeah. He just did it in a very incorrect way. Yeah, absolutely. I do understand that it's going to be hard for footballers, especially someone like Webster who's been playing for a long time, to get out of the mindset of that, mm. you know, to not do that. I get I get that. Yeah. Um, but surely... You know, you're training that during your preseason, and you're talking about it in meetings, and it's like getting yep. drilled into you by the coaching staff. You don't the see it very often these days, though, do you? So they are they are learning. The mm. players are learning not to do it because it, it it used to happen quite a lot where players would get taken out like that, especially with a bump, like what is considered a fair bump, really. Yeah, mm. as long as you're not laying them out. I think you know, obviously, with the news that Brayshaw um, has retired as well, yep. everyone's just 
like super sensitive about the issue at the moment because you don't want to see great players retiring mm. young and you know same thing happened to ours Paul Seedsman yeah you know I'm really grateful that that wasn't actually in a game and there wasn't other people involved mm. in that um but you know it's a sad end to his career and you know we just don't want to see that in sport yeah it's it's the well, I think we've spoken about it probably every year we've done this podcast that concussion is going to be a huge a huge story over the next 10 years in the AFL and and it's it's scary as a fan of the sport really to to know that it's going to be such a big talking point because you know who knows where it'll go yeah. it's such a you know high speed high intensity high you know impact sport that concussions almost um inevitable uh, metal skulls that's <laughs> 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 I have to start wearing helmets like actual helmets yeah go NFL style even I think they don't helmets do anyway. just encourage people to go in harder and get worse injuries. Yeah. I had this discussion with my physio actually this morning about the Pekovsky thing because he got – you guys probably don't know who he is, but he's a young cricketer who had all oh, the, yeah, all the accolades you know, early on in his career saying he was the next biggest thing in, in like Australian cricket and he just continuously gets hit in the head um, with the ball and got hit again on the weekend and he, he could be career over really with another one. Yeah, I sad. think it should be career over. Yeah. Now the other goss out of that game is uh, Alistair Clarkson flipping his lid <laughs> at uh, Webster and uh, Howard and mm. he called them cocksuckers. <laughs> we can say the word. Well, I'll say it. Um, now, <laughs> Should we say the word? Actually, you just did. Cocksuckers. <laughs> as long as you're not directing it at Dan. I'm you not weren't directing looking it at, him. at any and of is you. Is it confirmed or <laughs> alleged still? I think it was. Oh, it's confirmed. The news went with it. Like AFL, it was in a, AFL have asked for a please explain. The only news I saw was um, something derogatory, but I didn't hear nah, the word. No, they wrote the word with it like the, oh, did they? the OC yeah. in cock, um, like scrubbed out. So on the how news do you know it wasn't click stockers? <laughs> 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 well, mm. who knows, Ben. Um, <laughs> now, yeah. obviously, uh, you know, the cocksucker has its connotations and people are angry because mm. it can be seen as a homophobic slur in the way that he used that. And I, I, I agree. Why aren't you just going with cockhead? Yeah. Like, why aren't you saying cockhead? Yeah. Because that honestly has way more impact yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to sort of pour some salt on the uh, wound of Alistair Clarkson. I don't know if that's the right saying. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> He has a, obviously has a bit of a short memory um, being, you know, someone who actually started a whole melee by King hitting another player in a game <laughs> back in, uh, what was it, 1987. Yeah. <laughs> when I was born. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, the Battle of Britain it was called where he King hit a player from behind um, yeah, right. and then started a whole brawl in a London exhibition match. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a he's an angry. He's, he's a, a loose a hot, He's a hothead. He, you know, he punched the hole in that wall in the commentary box. He's one done year. a lot of a lot of angry things. Yeah. Um, he's He's gone off it. Uh, he went off at a reporter a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, not, not defending Jimmy Webster at, at all, but yeah, Clarko is not one to throw stones, is what I'm no, saying. No, no, definitely not. It's I don't know. It, it's a hundred percent going to be the AFL is going to say, "Look, can you just shut your mouth? Mm. Uh, nothing will come of it." Honestly, with North's off season, with this whole Taron Thomas bullshit, he should just keep his mouth shut. Yeah, yeah. Like you need to just chill, bro. Yeah. Because yeah, exactly. things aren't looking good for North Melbourne, nah, and you're probably, you're not really <laughs> contributing anything good right now. Yeah, that's it. What does look good for North Melbourne is uh, Sonia Hood and her um, words after Taryn Thomas was let go as well. I think she's pretty strong. You know, elaborate. Well, what I, just her statement? Oh, I disagree, Dan. Because shouldn't she have done something about that in the first instance? Yeah. They wanted to give him every chance. I guarantee if he was a Crows player, he would have been out the door after his first indiscretion. It's true. Well, that is the thing. Now, can we talk about the Gold Coast Suns and how shit they're going to be this year? Oh, <laughs> I'm excited. I actually I love the Gold Coast and I really want them to do well. But now that Dim is there, I just want them to just drown. Yep. I'm and with it's, you. oh, bring it on. I Every, can't wait. Everyone can work out that Dim is not actually that good of a coach. Yeah. I want him to be so bad. <laughs> I just want him to be so bad this year. Yeah. Except you know he I've got Tuke in my fantasy side, oh so he yeah. can be good. Yeah. But you know he would have strutted in there going, I'm a premiership coach. I'm going to turn this all around with every confidence in the world. And if it fails, it's just going to be so good. I just Please. saw it. All I've seen is him lifting weights while on the phone. <laughs> and yeah, which GWS. GWS. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and, mm. you know, opening rounds this week, but who gives a shit because the Crows aren't playing. No, that's right. Yeah, Why are they bothering? Playing. So dumb. Yeah. 
I heard that um, the you know they did it chose this weekend to do opening round because of the rugby mm. was in America, but actually the rugby was in America this weekend, just gone. Mm. Yo, yeah, well, I think they just wanted because the rugby always started a week before the AFL yeah. started, so I think they just wanted to put all of the northern based teams on the week that the NRL normally starts. Did the whole round of NRL play last week? Don't know. Or was it just the Las Vegas games? Asking the wrong not people. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. Don't know. Anyway, it's happening this weekend. and uh, like, uh, Is it messing whatever. with your fantasy plans, Lauren? Oh, no, because the opening round isn't – they're not doing the opening round with fantasy, are but they? those eight teams have very early buys. Uh... <laughs> I haven't looked into it that far ahead, but we'll talk about <laughs> okay. fantasy after. Sure. Uh, let's get into some season predictions. Let's do this. Just to clarify for those who might come at us, it was only the Las Vegas games that were played, so that's why the AFL's done it, because the actual opening round of the NRL is this weekend coming. That's a bit silly, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bit shit timing, really? Y- yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, what are we doing? Predictions. All right, fellas, give us your predictions. <laughs> do we have Do we have listener predictions? Um, I've got a few, uh, which I'll get to. I'm just trying to find my own now. Thanks to everyone that's joined the Discord, by the way. It's been good seeing a few people join that, a few names we've seen floating about. Yes, and these. that was on my thing to pump up was the Discord server. Now, we hate Twitter. Like we're, we I, w- I want to get rid of Twitter. We would love to get rid of it. We don't think we can, but... Our first step in doing that is to jump on Discord. So, if you, like us, have also had enough of Twitter. Enough of porn. And enough of blue ticks. <laughs> I thought you were going to say blue Get tits for a second. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Dan. Anyway. Uh, All those things that are like hashtag ad and it's just a girl with gigantic boobs. Yeah, it's like or the koshy <laughs> deep fakes. Like <laughs> any of that. If yeah, you're sick of that. The deep fakes are the worst. Yeah, yeah. just come. Sebastian. Get on Discord. It's, e- it's not scary. Yeah. It's just a chat room. It's basically a chat room. And uh, we want to build a community in there. We want to talk to you. We'll be doing a lot more live streams this year. So uh, that's a good way to get involved in the live stream is jump on the Discord while we're recording. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice little time. If you're bored at work, you can just jump in and have a little, have a little talk about the crows. I'm having a look at it now just uh, out of interest and your Av is on there. And he said uh, the Webster family, which we didn't actually bring up, the Webster family and uh, their Oh, yes. The, uh, oh, yeah. the Webster brother and sisters making naughty comments on Facebook. Yes, mm. very silly. Oh, dear. Yep. Yeah. That's, a, that's an AFL, too, please they? explain. That's a what the mm. F. Yeah, yeah, we had one uh, Jordan Keys, uh, Ben Keys' brother, that used to jump in and fight fights for Ben on, on Twitter. He's gone a bit quieter these days, but mm. um, yeah, it's always well, a bit of an interesting territory. Yeah, Ben was used was a bit of a whipping boy there when he first came to the Crows. Yeah, so and I mean, can't understand Jordan getting into that, but and I want to, I would defend Jordan by saying I'd be stupid enough to do that too. Oh yeah, same. <laughs> you I'd know me. My siblings. What was going on in Discord before about um, Swallow? We'll talk about Sparrow. that later. Sparrow, sorry. We'll talk about that. Oh, sorry. In social media. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see your. Let's have your predictions. What do you want to do first? Do you want to do where where are crows finishing, or do you want to do wins to the buy? Uh, wins to the buy. All right. What do you got, Sam? Oh, look, I know I get I cop shit for being the the negative Nelly of the podcast, and I know that we've had some negative comments come our way in uh, on the socials but i've got us winning 10 okay of the 15 games just pluck that number from nowhere sam no no use the uh, formula uh which would be to uh calculate any 50 50 games add them up and uh, i came to 10 (laughs) (laughs) ben dan's not listening so he hasn't reacted look at him (laughs) yeah 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 I'm trying to calculate mine. I was <laughs> like, what round is the buy? <laughs> uh, so, yes, I also used a similar system. Uh, look at the game, think if it's a win, a loss, or a 50 50. Uh, feeling a bit optimistic. <laughs> Isn't every game a 50 50? Dead, dead, just still So, would get you this suggest right that <laughs> the West Coast game uh, we just played was a 50 50 opportunity? <laughs> All right, no. carry on. All right, very good. Um, so, <laughs> from that. I also got us to 10 wins, four losses. Feeling overly optimistic. Oh, it, oh around 15 is the buy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so, so if you got games. us on 10 losses, ten, sorry, 10 wins, yep. What? how does anything equate to a 50-50? I don't understand. 
I'm, I'm guessing ben that... Ben and I really enjoy the fact that you don't... So out of the 50-50, <laughs> is, have you tipped it as a win or a loss? No, no it's a 50-50. It's, it's like half. So, so doesn't that mean you would have like eight I'm, wins plus two 50 They're adding 50 up the halves, yeah, Dan. One. So <laughs> I'm suggesting nine. Melbourne home <laughs> is 50-50 and Carlton away is 50-50. So on the law of averages, we might win one of those two games. So I give it one win. <laughs> I see. Dad doesn't like this. No. He she hates it. I didn't do it that way either. I just did. I, I've just gone balls out. Yeah. We're winning or losing. And I've got nine wins. And okay. that is actually me going back and changing one from ten. Yeah, right. Because mm-hmm. I too thought I might be being a little bit too optimistic. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I genuinely don't think we'll get to ten, but going through them, that's just what I came to, so... Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, what have you got there, Dan? I've got us. You, I've you actually add, a, add yours up. Well, I've actually Dan's got nine and a half. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> more yeah. systematic worked out in the last three minutes. I'm uh, the more negative make. one of the whole group. I've got us winning eight right. with uh, with a one fifty fifty to take us to nine if we win that one. <laughs> <laughs> when you need two fifty fifty, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's either we win or we lose. So we go eight or we win nine. I mean, <laughs> so good. <laughs> eight wins or nine wins. I reckon. We I reckon we first three games. <laughs> we're probably clear to win the first three. I think we've Agree. got Suns, but Suns are, are shit now, yeah. as we know. Uh, are they actually though? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think there's a fair chance. I think it's too early to tell. They do have a lot of talent, and they might be okay. But it, yeah, I'm calling it early. completely They're rudderless, shit. though. I reckon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then I think wishful thinking is playing a too large a part in your <laughs> prediction there, Sam. Yeah, maybe. I've already decided their shit. Um, <laughs> I reckon we can beat Geelong at home on a yeah. Friday night, first Very game well. of the year. Mm-hmm. That's my one. I'm not. Well, we beat that, them last year, didn't we? We did, and mm. I think we can do it again. But the uh, like I said to Dan, the car on the way. The problem with Geelong is that they are good travellers, mm. so that worries me slightly. But I feel like the big crowd, Friday night footy, um, and our first home game will get us over the line. Yeah. And I think we'll be- beat Freo fucking easy. Like, cause they're shit. <laughs> it's the D's and Carlton games, the next two, that concern me. And I really would like to think that we'd beat D's for the opening round of Gather Round. Mm. I think match, I put that I as say. a 50-50. <clears throat> you did too. But yeah. I would have a bad feeling that Carlton are going to beat us the next week. Yeah. So I've got those two marked as losses, unfortunately. And I don't have us winning the first showdown. No, nah, I've got that as 50-50. <laughs> You're on board? Yeah. <laughs> Just for that one. <laughs> and I, it really pains me to say I don't have us winning the first showdown, but I feel like Port are just due a win because well, we've, yeah. we've won the last three. <laughs> Is it last three? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. I've got both showdowns as 50-50s this year. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a good one, Dan. Yeah. Especially considering they drew in the preseason <laughs> game. <laughs> anyway, uh, what have you got for Crow's finishing position? I said sixth. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, uh, to be honest, I haven't actually done my total wins. I forgot to do that, uh, so I just guessed that six sounded about right. Some yep. natural progression that I know we shouldn't just rely on, but should be there hopefully. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I like we could have finished what seventh last year, really. So I don't know. It's not that much of a jump, is it? Really? No, nope. Ben. Um, I've gone with fifth, but wouldn't be surprised with anything between third and tenth. Third? (laughs) (laughs) Now, that's That's pretty. That is very broad. No, well, it just depends. If everything goes right, we don't have an issue with injuries. I think we've got a really solid team that our game plan stacks up against good teams Mm. and we could just go really well. That's the thing, isn't it? We showed last year we can play well against good teams. So If we get some of these... Close losses turn them into wins. We've got potential to be right up there. It's yep. just things don't always, and generally for us, don't go well. So <laughs> that's where we could have quite a disappointing season. Unfortunately but, for yeah. me, it's those teams that are around us that scare me the most, like GWS, Carlton, um, mm. Sydney. Well, Carlton They're, were top four. <clears throat> yeah, so it's it's those teams that like are kind of in a similar boat to us where they could easily drop off, but they could also easily be heaps better. Dan? Uh, I've got us finishing eighth or ninth. Um, so ninth would be with 11 wins or 12 wins for eighth. Interesting. Uh, Jesus, I've got a, seventh. That's a thin after the buy result. Mm. Well, we didn't talk about that, did we? No, but that's <laughs> what you got us only winning like three. No, there's a 50 50 in there. <laughs> 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 There's not many games after the bye, though, really. 
Oh, it's a bit lopsided this time. We must have the late buy. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've gone seventh. Okay. Because I feel like jumping to sixth is a big jump. Mm. But seventh. Seven, six is home final. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the listeners, they are also think around sixth and seventh. Mm. We're, we're travelling between sixth and seventh. Um, your other thinks fourth. Yeah, right. For the home and away season. So. I think like as much as Ben sitting on the fence with his third to tenth, I think he's 100% right. Because there's no guarantee that this team is just going to turn it on and, and sort of progress from next year either. So Or last year either. So... Yeah, we obviously all sit here, fingers crossed, that we're going to be better than we were last year. But I haven't seen I enough the in the preseason yet to be filled with confidence. Uh, I mean, the preseason means absolutely nothing. Mm. Um, we what we we lost? Did we? Didn't we lose both preseason games? Or we no, we won both preseason games last season, then lost three on the trot. So, ah, mm. uh, yeah, I try not to read too much into the preseason, honestly, because except for Gold Coast. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but that's Shut not up, that's got nothing to do with preseason. That's just dimmer. <laughs> and I'd just like to counter sitting on the fence. I did say fifth. No, no, I know you did, but then you came in with the other bit. But I no, well, I was giving you credit for that. I said it was good. Well, Appreciate I think it. we could Thanks finish on. between twelfth and seventeenth. <laughs> oh, sec- oh, first, first and eighteenth, second and seventeenth. So how many, how many total wins have you got, then? Uh, total. Or no, I actually didn't do that. Oh, you didn't I do don't that? know why I didn't just, do that. But I, I think last year we just did up to the buy, so I didn't. I think because it becomes a lot of variables. Oh, by that's then. one of the things yeah, on his I know. list. I even put it in my. No, oh, I sorry, I didn't actually do it. What you? Yeah, but you only gave us what like three or four wins after the buy. Yeah, I've just got us. Um, Is it eleven wins? Yeah, I say fourteen. Okay, see, fourteen's like well, and like it could be six. Mm. Well, really. that's that's my hope. Yeah. After the buyer, we've got the Lions, uh, Bombers away, Cats away. Hopefully, Swans we're away. not as bad against the Bombers away as we were last that's year. That's what God, I mean. I'm, I'm going off game. of that. Yeah, only. like that was a terrible game, wasn't it? It really was. And then the only ones we got at home are like Saints, Hawks, and Bulldogs or something, and then Port. So, like, they're winnable. Oh, I see what you mean. We do have a pretty tough run home, don't we? Yeah. Ben's just scrolling through it now. Yeah, not ideal, but, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Next one. Who is going to kick the most goals for the year from the Crows? Oh, I wrote this before the weekend, but I said Fogarty. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He didn't fill me with a lot of confidence (laughs) on the weekend. I thought in the first game that they were playing him in a more text-like role. Like, he seemed seemed to be playing in, like, more of that – pure goal kicking role in that first game against Port which made me write him down in as this is I think they might start to target him more but I don't know whether that was just a bit of a I don't, that we'll just throw him here because this game means nothing sort of position or what but or he just wasn't he wasn't psyched up for it clearly well uh, he'll get his chance with Phil Thorpe out he'll yeah. um, get a bigger potential chance of kicking goals yeah I don't know yeah. he kind of seems like he's like playing the man a lot he's just like he's just the body work kind of guy in mm. the forward line to, to free up Tex and Riley so when he's not given that role maybe things will change but he's a bit. such a good kick like he should be the one leading and then you'd have his the ball in his hands 50 55 out you back him in so I don't know mm, why yeah. I know but Tex is that player Tex. too but <laughs> yeah. um but you, we need like is this Texas last year well, who knows? Probably. I don't reckon it is. I reckon he's got one more at <laughs> least after this, but we'll see how the season so, goes. But yeah, but like we said earlier, we, we really want someone other than Tex kicking all the goals this year. Mm. No, you're right. Mm. And I think that person's going to be Isaac Rankin. <laughs> That's who I've put down. Yeah. Ben? Yeah. Um, I think it'll still be Tex, but a smaller margin. So I've got him for 58 goals. Okay. Oh, you've, How's you've that put a total defense? of goals as well. Okay, <laughs> I didn't put that. Dan, who yeah, I've got Isaac Rankin as well. I think he, um, yeah, he'll do a lot better I feel, this year. I think he's just going to go up another level this year, is, uh, in it, my opinion. I reckon if he played full-time forward this year, he would he would be a massive shout to kick most goals. Mm. I'm just hoping that they do um, go through with their sort of pre-season thing of putting him through the midfield a little bit because, yeah. yeah, he looked great when he went in there. And uh, who's going to be the Crows club champion? <laughs> We're all just going to be boring, surely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you got? Dawson. Yeah, back to back. <laughs> yeah, I just can't see. He's just clearly the best player on the team. So, yeah. Putting out there. I think Rankin might get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just... Maybe. The way that, the, the way that it's scored, the yeah. system just suits Dawson so well. Mm-hmm. Like, 
Uh, that's my reasoning. And I actually said, I actually think Hinge might be a chance at being, you know, up there. Maybe top three is a bit of a smoky as well, just because of how that scoring works. But I, I think our season has gone well. If Rankin wins it, I think that would be a great sign. Yeah, 100%. Agree. Yeah, yeah like if it. someone out of left field wins it that's not Dawson, then we've done all right. I yeah. think... Um, Chase Jones. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, I think we could be in like this weird, you know, when, when we had like the guys winning it consistently, like McLeod, you know, Rashudo, etc. There was always like a top three best players, but I think we really do have like one standout. And mm. then there's all these players that are sort of... Um, you know, not quite at that level, but they're good, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be nice to have some more, like, yeah, really pushing for that yeah. best player in the team title. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, that'll do for Crow's predictions, I think. Yep. Um, tell me who is going to win the wooden spoon, lose the spoon. Go win, first, Lauren. Win the spoon. <laughs> Wet toast. Oh, not said, dimmer. I said Gold Coast. <laughs> <laughs> I Imagine. hope you're right. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> ben, who you got? Yeah, West Coast. Yeah, the Cokers. <laughs> and uh, just Grant. on them quickly though, how good did Harley Reid look? Yeah, he was okay. I thought he looked pretty good. He did some really I nice things. Really he's a big boy. Yeah, he is. He's got a big, thick body. Mm. Um, loved Lady getting into him on the ground. <laughs> One little bit there, a little bit of scuffle. They yeah, were there was a bit. There was some. Footy, mate. There was some heat thrown at him. I think that <laughs> yeah. was a bit of a yeah. There was that was welcome, intentional. Welcome yeah, to the game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right, who have you got? Um, for the Brownlow? Oh, I said Dake, also Goulden. I've got the bond and it's already engraved because they want to make up for last year. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good <laughs> that's call, funny. actually. I said Dacos as well, but I didn't actually specify which Dacos. <laughs> um, I think Nick. You love, you love Josh. <laughs> I do love Josh, yeah. I think Josh is great, but I think Nick might get it this year. Yeah. I'm with Ben on Bont. Um, I think, yeah, he's definitely due. But I ha- the only thing I have the caveat I have with that is that Nick Dacos did miss games last year and still won it. So I think... He didn't win. He didn't oh, wait, win he it. didn't win. Hey, yeah. Who won it? <laughs> it oh, lucky deal. Lucky deal. Lucky deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, Nick Dacos could win it yeah. if he plays the full season. Uh, Nick Dacos and Golden were right there to yeah. potentially Golden's win that last great. year. Yeah. Um, with bon- Bontempelli, I think, did he miss the last... So it was something about that he was... When it got right to that crunch time that he couldn't have won. But yeah, it was... Um, yeah. yeah, I think Ben's probably right. The mm. AFL will uh, be doing everything in their power to make him. Uh, the, they do uh, the love Collingwood, do they? No, they I do. think yeah, the bond will be very noticeable to umpires this mm. year. Yeah, yeah, and it is, and I think Golden will score better. I, I actually put him in because it's shown that when players start to creep up towards the end of the year, you know, the umps are noticing them more, and then the next season they tend to score mm. better. Mm. So yeah, and half their midfield's out, so there's no one else to get points for Sydney. Mm, true. Interesting. True. All right, last one. Who is going to be in the grand final and who is going to win the premiership for 2024? I was pretty boring on this one too. I so said Collingwood and Brisbane again. <laughs> I just don't see anybody getting above them. I, I think that Collingwood's just a genuinely good team and super well coached and Brisbane's Brisbane's the same. They've just got so many good players. I just don't, I, I don't see who you could confidently argue is going to knock either of them off. Well, I don't see Collingwood as being that much further ahead. Like they won a lot of close games in their last two games. They won very close games. Yeah. So I think there is scope for other teams to jump ahead. But um, that, I think that's a credit to them, though, that they were oh, yeah. able to win those games. But I think, um, umpiring aside, your luck's going to run out eventually. <laughs> so <laughs> What's your prediction? Um, well, <laughs> Ben's got it in for Collingwood. <laughs> no, I, I, I've got it in for the excessive hype that they're suddenly an amazing dynasty team. Oh, look, I'm not jumping on that because don't get me wrong. They, I, I'm not. I mean, they were already the dynasty a dynasty team. team before they won the premiership. Yeah, last yeah, I know, year, and so that was a load of crap. It just, uh, yeah, a little bit too much hyperbole for my liking. But yeah. um, so my grand finalists were Brisbane and GWS. Mm. Um, if GWS can play this year like they finished last year, mm. I think they will be very hard to play against. They well, they missed the prelim by a point, didn't they? They yeah. Well, they just yeah just got beaten. So. Yeah. So um, yeah, so they're my two, and oh, Brisbane can't win a grand final. It seems so. I'll give it to GWS. Wow, that'd be <laughs> huge. Who you got? What I'd rather got? see Ben's um, prediction, but I've gone with Sam um, with Brisbane and Collingwood. And I actually think this is a little cheeky um, Collingwood getting Brisbane back for their dynasty back in the early 2000s. I think Collingwood will knock them off and get back to back. <laughs> well, uh, 
according to the listeners, um, the brown low should be going to Max Michael Annie. <laughs> Oh, or, yes. or Jordan Dawson. And, um, is, this most crow, is this Crows-based chat? This is the Here We Crow Discord. <laughs> um, North and West Coast are obviously going to be in the bottom. Now, a few in, like, I haven't told you my prediction for the grand final yet, but um, a few interesting ones in here. I reckon Collingwood, Premiership hangover. Not going to get there. Oof. You think that or something Yeah, I think that. Yeah. I think they're going to – I don't know. It's not the reality check. Is going to happen. They're not going to make it. And I reckon the Giants are going to get up. And I reckon Melbourne are coming back. They're coming back, baby. Uh, do you know why I reckon? Yuck. Because yeah, that's gross. you know how every time the Crows have fucked things happen in the off season <laughs> and then our season sucks? Mm. I reckon it's going to be the complete opposite for Melbourne. I reckon mm. they're going to have a really awful preseason, off season, all of the shit, and then they're going to turn it around and they're going to come back and make the grand final. Oh, I hope you're wrong. <laughs> I heard <laughs> Me it. too. <laughs> Clearly I want the crows in there. <laughs> I heard a sneaky little rumour last week that didn't seem to come to fruition, but there was word on the street that Goodwin was going to get sacked. Yeah, it was someone went with that. On yeah, the I didn't hear I anything else about it though. But. Yeah, I don't know. There's just too much going on there for them to not turn around, and I bet you Clayton Oliver has the year of his life. Like all on of that field or <laughs> both, <laughs> um, and yeah, I, th- I do. Th- I do think the orange team, the orange team, are going to get up this year. Mm. I feel we're going to have Alex back on this year. Absolutely, he's got his own. He's podcast. got his own podcast now. Yeah. Is it about football? Yes. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. It's not about <laughs> Warney. <laughs> <laughs> well, suffice to say, it's going to be a very interesting year, and yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to it. That's Huge. for sure. Out the. Dwayne Pipe. Dwayne Pipe. Dwayne the Pipes Russell. Welcome to our brand new segment. Yes, that's right. We are going to take all the shit takes from Dwayne Russell <laughs> throughout the year. Um, and uh, this particular one had us all vomiting in our mouths um, <laughs> when uh, we saw the playback on social media. Play it for us. Later. Wines muscled out of it by Hughes. Big Charlie barrels his way past the couple. Took four to bring him down. <laughs> Did it? Did it, Dwayne? Darcy Burn Jones. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. When you say this is terrific, it depends who you are in this circumstance. <laughs> well, it's awesome. Sometimes you're the windscreen, sometimes you're the bug. <laughs> sometimes you're the windscreen, sometimes you're the bug. Is he talking about himself? Yeah, I don't know. But if, if anyone anyone who actually watched that footage, apart from Dwayne Russell... You can what? actually only see one player near you. <laughs> one, player, one, one player slipped over or something. The second player, he just he got tackled by and he fell to the ground and dropped to the ball. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you exaggerate the number of players tackling. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There definitely wasn't anywhere near four players there. No. And, you know, it was, but it was Big Charlie going in. Oh, but, you know, he didn't it's fun, him, isn't it? At least he didn't call him King Charlie. And I mean, and, and as someone on social media did um, mention as well, it took the gloss completely off the actual good goal that, <laughs> that Darcy Ben jones kicked. So mm. Down the Dwayne pipe. Down the Dwayne <laughs> pipe. Out, out the Dwayne pipe. I don't think we're going to have a lack of uh, content. For well, this. We, we, the, the unfortunate thing is we're going to have to look out for it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've got any other football media personalities that you want us to make a segment out of. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what I do want to do as a part of that is... Um, Crows fans who are listening to our podcast, if you can just uh, name and shame when you do find any Dwayne Russell yeah. isms, forward them on. <laughs> Let no, us know. We'll take them all. The bi- other big query is: Will people tolerate that stinger for very long? No, no. That's but a very so loud gurgle. We can make a new one, oh, but we probably what? won't. That's too much work. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll shorten it. It'll be fine. Don't worry. All right. Social media. Ooh, that button. <laughs> No, we need to bring back at some You've point. You've had three months to sort out this panel of we need, noises. We need Vic Bait back. Yeah, I saw that. It's on there still. We need to play that. We don't have any Vic Bait yet. Now the boom. On the full. Thanks, Thanks to everyone. We're missing phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys just, are just right? talking Keen. off mic there. No dickhead. worries. What about David King? What a dickhead. <laughs> What, because he was pumping us up last year and now he thinks now we're going to drop off the yeah, cliff? Yeah, but he just he just goes with whatever is happening at the time. He's such a... Yeah, give it... Give it we'll win the first three and yeah, he'll be back he'll be on board. straight on board, yeah. It's fine. All right, let's let's uh, let's see what you've got to say on the socials. Backstreet Boise, gutted for filth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give Cook a run. How do, you know, how do we know we're going to say that? <laughs> 
Had Sloan, Fogg, Rob, T. Kelly and Jay Hunt at work during the week. All certified legends. I bumped into oh, yeah, Boise the old, at the game. Uh, the old Hungry Jacks ad. Yeah, he had all the Hungry Jacks teams um, in the one state <laughs> and <laughs> he reaped the benefits. Excellent. Did he get Rob to sign a burger this time? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, he says, Rob, skip and ranks the standouts from Saturday. Definitely didn't see the Shoal Bez resurgence coming. I did. <laughs> Sholly resurgence, that is. Mm. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, I forgot to bring this up. Um, Dan said that uh, it was a big weekend. He's got another huge weekend coming up with WOMAD a 21st. Who's mm. 21st? You going to? One of my cousins. Oh, okay. Mm. I was like, you don't know any 21 <laughs> yeah. I'm like, first you think you're as tall as Luke Peddler, and mm. now you're going to a 21st. What's happening? Yeah, it's all happening. That was a bit of, where's bit the 21st? Oh, somewhere down the bay. Oh, nice. Hold fast. It's a bit of toolies area uh, mm. areas for you there, Dan. Yeah, I'm a bit. Tra- yeah. You want to come stay at mine? It's not going to be pretty. You can come. You can come to my Maybe house. Maybe actually. <laughs> we'll walk to your house. I'm sure Lizzie will appreciate that. <laughs> All right, enough. Uh, slug. <laughs> I've seen a few covers around the joint saying Barry's year last year was a blip in his trajectory and could develop into a first eighteen player quite quickly. Showed what he can offer, but he's back a few in the pecking order. I'm optimistic. Be interesting to watch him this year. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he, that two years ago when he was what he led the tackling chart and everyone was raving about him, and then last year you basically wouldn't have even known he was on the list. Yeah, he probably no. dropped yeah. off. And he had that game against Sydney where he kicked a couple goals and just was bursting out of packs and looking like he could become anything. Yeah. And yeah. Nothing happened last year, and then this year, out of nowhere, well, from our perspective, he's suddenly back, back in contention. Radar. And yeah. I mean, um, you know, you never know what's going on in someone's life outside mm. of football, and you know, it could be a confidence thing. Yeah, maybe well, it's um, going to be an interesting midfield mix now that he's thrown in there with um, Crouch and Laird as well. So, um, and we're throwing in some forwards through there as well. Three yeah. like Peddler, Ranking, Rochelle. It's going to be yeah. It'll be hopefully we stay brave if it doesn't work perfectly to start the season. I, th- I think one hundred percent agree. We've, we've got so much depth. What I was going to mention is that because I like to mention my um, you know interactions with Sam Berry, but. Uh, <laughs> I've interacted with him twice. And already he told do- the auction story. He does sound like a genu- <laughs> he does seem like a genuinely good guy. So yeah. I hope he does well. Yeah, Dan's a great judge of character, guys. <laughs> um, well, I am. <laughs> Hang out with you, losers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got, got some more from Twitter. Then I'm going to get onto the Discord. Uh, oh, I got Instagram too. Oh, do you? Yeah, right. on here. Mark Bubner said, "Gutted about the filthy injury. Hope he's not out for too long. Excited to see some pace in the midfield with R and R rolling through there. Can't wait for the season to start." Matty C, I thought we did okay on the weekend, but hard to gauge against a team like West Coast. Dawson and yep. Rankin were very good. Excited to see Rankin go next level. I'm pretty sure we'll all make it into the top eight um, as I've booked an overseas trip and we'll miss week one of the finals. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Uh, ich bin rat seeking. was good to see Cookie have a big fourth quarter in the twos game. Barry looks to have gone to another level. Just hope he can sustain his improved disposal under real pressure. Mm. Rankin, very good, and Dawson, ever reliable, and setting up play. Phil Thorpe, a worry even before the injury. Yeah, that's he a fair point. He was a little bit on Saturday. Yeah. He, I thought the Port game, he played really yeah, well. He, he clunked started amazing, amazing marks well. and like, kicked heaps of goals. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he wasn't quite as on um, on Saturday. But it was hot. Like, yeah. It was super hot. Yeah. I think, uh, I think another worry from last year that looks still fairly uh, fragile is our general kicking at goal for fairly easy set shots. Mm. Yeah, we're missing, still missing a fair few that we should nail. So who, you, who are you talking about, Ben? Shh. <laughs> general players that are having a reasonably easy <laughs> set. Don't talk at about them the day that they're on the podcast. <laughs> we started pretty well uh, on the weekend, though. We were kicking pretty straight in the first quarter, and then it sort of we slowly but surely caught up with the points. Uh, we've, we've got a message from Jetty, Whoa. and this is specifically to you, Sam. Yes. With Sam's passion for bakery delights and his thoughts about Rob, I feel <laughs> humble pie should be on the menu this week. <laughs> I need to have a piece saved for me. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem with uh, Rob enthusiasts, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think Jetty is one, though. No, she's, she's saying not. She no, also she's wants a bit of humble Sorry, pie. Jetty, I'll yeah. take it back. Yeah, um, it's um, – no, she's a, she, she makes a good point, and it's a, it's a well-made point, but it's – um. <laughs> Yeah, I'm certainly not going to be changing my opinion on the back of a ga- a ga- nothing game against West Coast. But um, okay, we'll see. Okay. I think it's just as much to be enthused about his form as any other player coming into the season. Well, that's nah, what Nah, that's a stupid comment, Ben. 
<laughs> I felt like Ben trying to have you back there. What? No, he was. He was saying. No, I was saying that. It, it, yeah, no, I think there's potential for Rob to be quite a useful contributor this year. He'll be back to his clumsy worst. Oh he, no, gosh. he looked back Don't to like when that. he won a club championship <laughs> oh, yeah. in 2020. I'm Some with of ben. the stuff he was doing was similar to why for a while there. Even Sam thought he was quite a good player. No, I'll say in 2024. Not. I'm pro Rob and I vote. Oh no, <laughs> you've been spending too much time with Elodie. It's purely just stir some shit in the podcast. And, well, and realistically, I'm. I think Rob will be fine, and I think Rob will be good enough that it really doesn't matter for our team. He'll be good enough. First mm. game up against Jared Witts, and he gets an absolute bath. We'll wait and see. We will see. Well, the Gold be, Coast won't win be because Dimmer's very coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, right. no. The problem with Gold Coast is we got just the same as GWS. They put <laughs> us in a nice, humid environment, which mm. really was our Achilles heel last year. And Lady can't play in the heat. No, Lady will be out. Rankin was his worst game was against Gold Coast last mm. year. So, oh, that Gold Coast game was so the shit. The first was it the first one or, and the second one? He no, he didn't play the first one, did he? Against Gold Coast, didn't he? No, nah, there was one he missed. I can't was it was just a shit game. I, I can't remember him exactly, but I reckon he missed the second game. Did we actually. play Gold Coast twice or what? Yeah, we, did. we played Gold Coast in Darwin. We, didn't we? did with yeah. Darwin where we we smashed them and then we they smashed us. Yeah, there was one. I think well, one I think game he before. done his hamstring. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I swear yeah. that was a thing. I just remember a really bad Gold Coast game. Buddy yeah. Magic has this to say: He wants to see Taylor Edwards, Ryan Cook, and Nankervis at Al. Throughout the year, but don't want injuries or form dropping off from others in order to make that possible. How do we do that? Mm. Oh, 28-man squad. Yeah, I think it's a very extended bench, that one. Yeah. Unfortunately, I feel, well, Nank's probably the one out in that group that I don't think this of, but I think anyone else is only coming in from injury. And the other uh, player that's yeah. not quite in the team at the moment um, is Curtin, obviously. So it yeah. be interesting to see how he gets injected into the team this year. If he does. He will. He'll play at some stage, I would have thought. Yeah. Mm, we'll Definitely. see. We'll see. You know how they, uh, the big boys, they like to hold, hold, put him on ice for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's a, yeah, but he's not he's not a, like a tall forward. I mean, uh, he'll, he'll play at some point, I he was He was waffling last year, so yeah, have a chance. You done? No. Uh, Griteo. You said we had none. We got heaps. Oh, I've got the Discord to do now. Oh, my God. Uh, Griteo says, kind of see where people are at with our defence, but overall they held up well, albeit against the Eagles. I think once Keane is back in, we'll have a better option than just uh, Butsy. As good as he is, he doesn't really gun for the footy from what I saw. Can't wait for him to prove me wrong. Ball lays look good down back as well. Just simple clean kicks and handballs to decent to good options. Don't know if I saw him hit it to a bad option, honestly. Just because we seemed so unsure about it before, I just wanted to look up while you guys were talking. I was looking up the Gold Coast games from last year. We played them in round 12 um, in Darwin. We lost by 25 points. Yeah, I thought we lost there. Ranking kicks. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah we, we, got out. we were winning by 36 or something yeah, and they yeah. ran over the top. Rankin yeah. was playing but only kicked two behind. And then we played him again shortly after, I think. I'll just need to – you keep going and I'll find the other one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bated breath is where I'm at. Now, yeah. obviously the other big question which has been debated on the Discord is who's coming in for Riley? Uh, um, so just to make sure it's as nonsensical as possible, the Borlais, Keane and – who was it? Butts. Mm. I personally think that Keane comes in probably in Borlais' place as opposed to Butts. Agree. I, I, I agree with that, yes. Keane has to play if he's right to go. Keane must play, yeah. must. And I think Butts plays a defensive lockdown role. I think Keane can do a bit more runoff stuff, yep. which I think he'll do slightly better than Borlais can. Yep, yep, I agree. Well, we sure. Uh, and we've got Weasel Borlase, as well. Borlais has suddenly gained uh, an extra quarter of fitness from last year. Oh, he still has big shoulders, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he does have very big shoulders. Very large shoulders. Now, the My- second... <laughs> the second game against Gold Coast, we returned surf by winning by 28 points at home. Rankin did not play that one. Thank you. I'm glad we went back in time yes. to learn all of that information. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it was important it was. for some reason. Mm. Now, I think the um, replacement for Thilthorpe, I think, is Burgess. We basically got him at, for that role. Uh, it's between him and Squiggles, I reckon. Gallant. 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 
I yeah, yeah. I um, think I think it has to be Gollum, doesn't it? I guess the only thing is if, who they're going to have as their second ruckman. Well, that's where I know oh, that we don't need I know one that because Rob's so good. Well, yeah, there's that, but also Burgess has Burgess has been rucking. Dragon, um, dragon time in the preseason. Oh, he's d- playing in defence. We cannot. We're not. Bre- if he comes in, he's been training. <laughs> I'm as not watching if he comes you. in. He's not coming in as a forward. He's been training <laughs> as a defender. Do you guys keep up? No, I know. Come but on. like, it doesn't doesn't mean he couldn't go back forward if they needed him <laughs> to. Will, no, I'm keeping up. I just wanted to make Sam angry. Did? Yeah. <laughs> They've got no reason to do. Late that. last year, did Gollan have a go in ruck, sort of jumping around, yeah. having a bit of a hit? He so did. Yeah. Mm. The new ruck rule will not help Gollan because he's a jumper, not a uh, shover offerer. Mm. So, mm. But yeah, it'll help Dragon. <sighs> the other option is they Shut go up, small Ted. and Ned comes in. Ned, <laughs> as, as the back of ruck. <laughs> 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 no, obviously he won't be rucking. <laughs> but it would Rob be will funny. be doing it all day, which is what he always wants. I don't want Ned in the team. I know he played that. Fir- I know he played well in that first game, but I don't know. Oh, surely no we've got better options. <laughs> he'll, better be options. The, he'll be in the surely leadership group Surely we've got better year. options than that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think you're like overly harsh on Ned for maybe. no reason. Maybe. I just don't. I just don't see him as you know. Our, you know I just don't see him as playing in our next premiership. He's not going to learn how to play if he's sitting on the bench. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon players like <laughs> Edwards, Ryan, and stuff are going to come in eventually. So mm. they will. That's take, my hope. take his spot. So, yeah. but yeah. We'll see. All right, before Sam gets to Instagram, rumour has it that we're going after Sparrow. Doot, doot. Tom Sparrow. I'd rather petty. I think we're going to try and get both. Mm. Just saying. Who you got on Instagram there? Uh, Daniel Altman. Sad for Filthy, but keen for Burjo. So he thinks Burjo's coming in. Or keen. <laughs> yeah, very good. Burjo <laughs> would definitely... <laughs> I think Burjo could shoulder the ruck <laughs> Just a shoulder pun there. Oh, yeah, that was good. That yeah, bird drew. It was really strong. Would have worked shoulders. better for uh, um, Paul Ace, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Don't um, ruin it. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, Gern- Guernsers. Does anyone know who Guernsers is? It's a new name. Top four preliminary loss. Dawson top five. Brownlow. I like it, actually. Prelim loss, I'll though. take it. Would we be happy? Well... If we if we got to a prelim and lost, would we be happy? Obviously, no, we wouldn't be happy. We would not be like, happy. No, you know what I mean, though. But I mean, we would be happy with that season. I think you could go with possibly satisfied, but not happy. Satisfied, that's yeah. a better word. All right, just use that. Are we satisfied? Um, not angry, disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for messaging, Guernsey. Keep uh, is that? Oh, I don't even know if that's how you say it, but please keep messaging. Uh, Kate. Welcome back, team. So excited for AFC and Here We Crow season 2024. Biggest yes. sign that the boys mean business this year, in my opinion, is they've sorted out their haircuts. Oh, Thoughts? They have got their new season haircuts. You can see uh, Rochelle's gotten rid of the sideburns. Rochelle, okay, I could not figure out for the life of me what's going on there. He's either shaved it, he's got a fade, or he's bleached it. No, I couldn't tell. Got a fade. Couldn't tell in the, on the telly. It's a fade. Oh, it's a fade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely a fade. It's too faded. <laughs> nah, I reckon he's doing all right. Good on you, Josh. You were pretty happy with it, Dan? Yeah, I like a fade. <laughs> <as you laughs> no, I was getting some Mr. Burns, like, yeah, trippy yeah. sideburns vibes. Oh, no, nah, it's not that bad. I thought oh, it, was, it was a reasonable It looked cut. pretty bad from the sidelines. Yeah, it was, all, it was okay. It was very high up, sort of, mm. yeah. but it was Who okay. else has had a haircut? I don't know, Kate. Okay. Luke Pedler certainly hasn't. Um, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Uh, no, she, Kay hasn't gone into any detail here, just in general, yeah, about haircuts. So I need more info. She said looking serious is the first step. It's true. Yeah. Uh, also, not me having to upskill myself on Discord. I know I'm a Luddite. Get you around get, it, Kate. You'll be on, fine. Kate. Also, Lizzie. Lizzie's commented on the thing. Oh, really? Are you getting Luke Pedler? He's my favourite. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> she did tell me how much she likes Luke Pedler on the weekend. Oh, I better send her that whole video clip. Maybe. Yeah, yeah you might have to. We also got uh, we also got a message from Dirk. We're gonna we're gonna dive into oh, Dirk's full message. Oh, welcome back. back for this one. Welcome back. Here we crowers. Hope you're cracking three of these on the show to celebrate. If they've dropped at the TA yet, and he sent a picture of Coopers, the new Coopers. Has anyone seen that? Coopers, I don't know if Coopers have actually released what it is yet. He sent us the blurred out image. It's, they're calling it Botanic Ale. Apparently, it's like sparkling with different hops in it. Well, may so have that when. What it color is it? It's really colorful. Yuck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, 
Pumped for Jose Morchiba. I love him, so got to be a Ben Ben, surely. Corinne Bailey Ray's new album blew me away and Yusuf Days and Budos Band plus plus footies back. Why is he talking about Womad? Uh, He's a music man. Did you not know this? He's oh, yeah. a music man. I saw him at Harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Is anyone else going to Womad? Yeah, I'm Womad. going. Yeah, yeah, see goes. you there, Dirk. Come yeah. say hi. Yeah. Uh, plus, sounds like Clarko might get suspended. What a dog act day. Such an angry little port power reject. <laughs> <laughs> Big bustling Burjo's going to bring his own Sharon and bury Dimmer and his boys. Sorry, Dimmer. No more whistling at female trainers from the bench, you saddo. Bring it on all of it. Uh, also, let's get a Lauren Cocor to mark this joyous occasion as she neglected to do it, the Christmas app, despite my heartfelt request. Like Cheers. you did it at the start. I'm open with it, Dirk, <laughs> so your wish has come true. It's less of a Cocor and more of a sick crow, though, isn't yeah. it? It's not sick. It's ah. the real noise. <laughs> <laughs> I recorded a crow and implanted it into my voice box. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Oh, there was a bit of – we got a few messages from Bolzer too on uh, Instagram today. Oh, yeah, because I, I did say to Bozza, we don't need your selections this week, but if you want to give us your predictions. Um, Can we officially announce that Bozza's back? Bozza is absolutely back. He's yeah. back. Uh, but I don't think he gave us much there, did he? No, oh, he just he's, – he's gone real, real weak on the uh, first few games uh, prospects for us. Yeah. Two wins in the first five, which is quite different to what we were thinking. Yeah, so, well, come on, Bozza. Three, Bozza's not. <laughs> I, I think he's pretty sad about um, Filthy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, well, as yeah, everyone would be. Yeah. So, yeah, not idea, but good to have Bozza back. He's been obviously missing on Twitter. If you had a few people reaching out, made, yeah. Well, I don't sure know if you heard, but he's in the Discord. So if yeah, you want to go at Bozza, <laughs> <laughs> jump into the Discord. <laughs> But obviously we'll be moderating that, so yeah. don't go too hard. <laughs> hey, uh, that's the end of this episode, episode 0 slash 80 for the opening round. Was there nothing good on Discord? Whip, whip, what do you whip, mean? Whip, I said it all already. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. Sam wasn't uh, listening. Thanks for joining us once again. We are so pleased to be back for 2024 in what is going to be a fun and potentially crazy season for the Adelaide Crows. What day are we recording next week? Tuesday. Okay. Because it's a public holiday on Monday and this this place would be pumped. Yeah, true. We probably should have mentioned um, at some point as well, we're going to definitely have some new merchandise this year. <laughs> which is Limited going stuff. With some limited edition merchandise, maybe some collaboration, cheeky collaboration. Yeah, look, don't give oh, too much away. Yeah, shut up. Don't man. give too much away in the first episode. I said maybe. <laughs> <laughs> also. Uh, You're not clearing this with me <laughs> at all. This guy is saying it. Oh, yeah. Also, with uh, it would be a strange thing to bring up if we're not going to do that. Don't yeah, we? <laughs> potentially we might not. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't, then you know it's just disappointing. Uh, so so good. Hold, I'm holding us to account. Yeah. Um. Maybe. <laughs> but we're also going to go live. So then, so listen to us. You tune in on YouTube next Tuesday. Tune in YouTube. We're also going to have two members of the the podcast going off to have babies. So we might have some stand-in hosts at some point. Yes. I'm also going overseas. So another host will come in. For Why that. don't you just reveal the whole schedule for the year, Dan. What have we got? <laughs> we might prepare let's, do it, let's do it week by week. I don't care. <laughs> Is our, have we worked out our strategy for live and Dan's um, toilet breaks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. Then. Yeah, have we, we could have a photo of Macca on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to know how quickly beer goes through in my system. Mm. Right. Yep. All right. Anyway, it's that been it. real. So. We're gonna oh, we're about? gonna send it out with uh, Ben's song. Ben, yes. take so, away. Yes, as I said, the smile, wall of eyes is the album. The song is "Read the Room." Don't bump people in the head. Uh, <laughs> one of the one of the bits. I don't know if they do choruses in this song, but basically, one of the lines is honestly, maybe you should read the room. What on earth? Come on, honey, read the room. Thanks, Ben. Here we crow. See you next ah. week. <laughs>